Guten Tag and welcome to... Wait a minute. This isn't my channel. Now, that's better. Where was I? Um, oh yeah, British Hanover. The Kingdom of Hanover was an impersonal union with the Kingdom of Great Britain since 1714, when Anne Stewart died without an heir. Because of the Settlement Act of 1701, only Protestant relatives can become king or queen, which in this case was George I of Hanover, the Kurfürst of braunschweig lüneburg By the way, I will now refer to Hanover as Hanover. It's a German pronunciation and more natural to me. It also induces less pain than saying Hanover or something similar. Now that might sound a little confusing, but what I will refer to as the Kingdom of Hanover didn't actually exist at that point. It was the electorate of braunschweig lüneburg often called Hanover. Anyway, after Napoleon messed up Europe for a bit, Hanover established itself as the Kingdom of Hanover at the Vienna Congress. Surprisingly, everyone simply shrugged and said okay. In our timeline, Britain and Hanover were separated in 1837, when Queen Victoria ascended the British throne. You might wonder, why did they separate? Well, in the Kingdom of Hanover, only males can become rulers. This goes back to the Lex Salica, a law from the 5th century made by the Franks, which dictates that women can't inherit the crown, even if the ruling monarchs had no sons. Therefore, Victoria's uncle Ernst August, Duke of Cumberland, became the King of Hanover. His son George V ruled until 1866, when Prussia annexed the kingdom in their efforts to unite Germany after the Brothers' War. That's all the background information you get. If you want a more detailed history, I guess you must go to my channel. Now, what if we change history? What if Hanover and Great Britain stayed in a personal union? How? There are two possibilities. First, William IV gets at least one son, but taking out Victoria from history seems rather unpredictable, so let's do number two. King William IV of Hanover and Great Britain changes the succession law in Hanover after the Congress of Vienna. Let's say he wanted to make Hanover's system more modern and more like Britain's. The so-called semi-Salic version of succession order stipulates that firstly all male descendants is applied, including all collateral male lines. But if all such lines are extinct, then the closest female agnate, such as a daughter, of the last male holder of the property inherits, and after her, her own male heirs according to the Salic order. It's a relatively small change, and I think it's not impossible for the Hanoverians to accept after Napoleon brought more modern ideas into the heads of people. Well, splendid! Now Victoria can be Queen of Hanover as well, but what exactly changes? A lot. Like, really. First of all, the influence on Prussia and Germany. Queen Victoria spread her dynasty to multiple noble houses and especially ruling families. For example, Willem II, who would later become Kaiser of Germany, was her grandson. Victoria married her oldest daughter, also named Victoria, to Frederick III of Prussia, who sadly only reigned the German Empire for 99 days before his death. Victoria hoped to export a British constitutional monarchy to Prussia, which in our timeline obviously and sadly failed. However, if Queen Victoria was regent of Hanover, things might have gone differently. She had something to pressure the Prussians with. She was positive towards Prussia and Germany, but disliked Bismarck. It's hard to say if Bismarck would have united the empire when Hanover was ruled by Britain. I can imagine that a war against Denmark would have happened, and as a consequence probably the war against Austria. But when Hanover was allied to Austria, the British government would probably not support the enemy of their family's ties, I guess at least. I mean, Victoria hated Bismarck, but her daughter was married to the crown prince. Furthermore, Austria was not exactly what the British imagined a modern monarchy or a state to look like. Franz Joseph I, the Emperor of Austria, ruled with a neo-absolutistic way. During the 1860s, Britain was involved in a series of rather small wars like the East Cape War or the Sikiti War which I probably pronounced wrong. I'm not sure how well the population would have liked to intervene in a war that was also known as the German Civil War. Even if the government didn't officially join, I can imagine that some Hanoverians joined either side as volunteers to fight for what they believed was right. In the end, German unification will happen. Probably similar to our timeline with a war against France. I guess the southern states would join, even if only reluctantly. The biggest question would be Bavaria. Bismarck bought the Bavarian king with the Welfenschatz, which was located in Hanover. But since the Prussians didn't have that money, getting Bavaria to agree to joining the empire might be difficult. Even if Bavaria decides not to join the empire, an alliance would be made and Bavaria would essentially be something like a puppet state. Regardless, they would join World War I, 
which is the important part for us. As you can see, theorizing about this timeline isn't exactly easy. But let's just say that Prussia would also win against Austria in this timeline, simply because Great Britain didn't feel like fighting alongside Austria. That still makes things complicated, because if Hannover was to be included in the North German Confederation, Prussia couldn't just dictate everything and would eventually actually have to respect at least the British opinion. Maybe through that Victoria could extend her democratic influence into the German government. This however is quite unlikely, since Bismarck had vastly different plans and tried to make the Prussian king as powerful as possible. I guess that the English diplomats and Bismarck would have had many discussions in strong worded letters before agreeing on anything that could make Hannover part of the German Empire while simultaneously being ruled by Britain's monarch. The construct would also make a war between the two complicated. What side would Hannover be on? Would they be neutral? Would their neutrality be respected? So I guess that seems impossible. Maybe Hannover could have been ruled by Queen Victoria's daughter and Frederick, basically ending the personal union but having close ties to both the von Hohenzollern and von Wolf dynasties, hoping that Frederick III and Victoria kept their British understanding of monarchy. Frederick was rather liberal, similar to his wife, but he was fiercely loyal to his father Wilhelm I, and thus would have probably given in to most of his commands. Since Hannover somehow joining the German Empire seems unlikely to say the least, what if the Prussian and British government simply agreed on having a customs union and free travel between Germany and Hannover? That could also make some sort of Hanoverian-German alliance, where the Hanoverian army would regularly train with the German brothers and help them out when needed. This would make the German nationalists happy, since Germany still wasn't unified. But most of the original nationalists from the 1848 revolution were very disappointed by the German Empire because of its lack of democracy and freedoms. For these people, Hannover could seem like an ideal prototype. You see, the region around Hannover was always quite liberal, as far as I researched. I've heard that during the carnival season, the people were very liberal with their views regarding nudity. With this background and the British having influence over this region, it seems logical that democratic German nationalists would move here, as opposed to the almost absolutist German Empire, hoping that their brothers can eventually see the benefits of more modern ideas. Could this be a point of conflict? Absolutely. Will this lead to war? M maybe? You see, when Bismarck and Wilhelm I were okay with a solution like this, Wilhelm II would probably hate it. He was a rather special man. Victoria thought that her grandson Prince Wilhelm inherited every regrettable character trait of the von Hohenzollern dynasty, and she wasn't too wrong. He came to power in 1888, when Victoria was still alive and quite well. The British army was experienced and had large reserves, so a war could end terribly. Even though at the start of World War I, the German army had over 700,000 soldiers, in the late 19th century and early 20th century, I doubt they had the same strength. Especially the navy was not even close to be able to compete with Britain's. The best case scenario for the Germans would have been to occupy Hannover before the British could properly reinforce their positions and thus drive their troops out of continental Europe at least the German part. This would have the consequence that the British Navy blockades the North and Mediterranean Sea, thus effectively starving the Germans into surrender, similar to what happened in World War I. Even if Austria-Hungary joined, it would make a difference, none whatsoever. And Britain could ally themselves with France, starting World War II early, and absolutely demolishing the young German Empire. I think not even Wilhelm II would be stupid enough to start this war. I think it's more likely that the German government tries to negotiate with the British to get an offer. They could offer their colonies, which the British had great interest in, in exchange for the German lands. The Hannover region was pretty agrarian and didn't have such amazing industrial centers as London or the Ruhr area. But I'm not too sure if Britain would have agreed to such a deal. After all, they might have at least some sentimental connection to the region. It was a weak point in the German defenses but also for the British, since the area was mostly flat land, with only few rivers and not easy to defend either. I guess the region would stay under British control, to the annoyance of the Germans. World War I would start eventually, that's clear. The question now is whether Germany would still try to go to Paris through Belgium. The answer is most likely yes. They didn't expect Britain to join at all and their attack plans didn't extend into the now British area. So they would most likely still violate the Belgian neutrality. I wonder now whether Britain would enter the war. In our timeline, they didn't really have anything to lose at the beginning, but that's different now. I predict that the war support in Hannover would be high. This was the chance to bring democratic values to their poor, mess-led brothers. However, this would be costly. 
The British would suffer heavy losses in Hanover and would have to give up a lot of land initially. That is, if the Germans had made precautions and stationed the border. If they didn't, which could be likely since they didn't expect Britain to join, the Entente could make some good gains in northern Germany before being forced into trench warfare. However the first years go, in the end Germany would lose. No Kaiserreich wäre bus allowed here, I'm sorry. How to deal with Germany after the Great War? Well that's a good question. The reparations and also Lorraine things are given. The Tsar area will probably also undergo the same procedure as in our timeline. I guess Britain would now also get parts of northern Germany occupied. Or Hannover does so. I'd imagine after the war Hannover could move towards independence as a republic. Under the rule of self-determination, an election could be held whether the Hanoverians would like to keep their personal union or get independence as a republic. This could honestly go either way, or not happen at all, but I think it will be more fun if they get independence. At this point basically anything is fair game. I guess the liberals and social democrats would form the first Hanoverian government and try to support their German counterpart. The republic in Hannover would be much stronger than in the rest of Germany. It would also make the surrounding parts less effectable for nationalist and anti-semitic propaganda. Since the people there saw how the war went, that their soldiers weren't undefeated and that the so-called Deutschlos-Legende at least isn't the defining factor for their loss. The economic recession would still set in and hit both nations severely. I think it's not unlikely for both to strive towards unification, even before the Great Depression. The Hanoverian democracy could strengthen the German one and both could benefit from this union. Let's say they unite somewhere around 1925 to 1930. This would give Germany better diplomatic relations to Britain and Hanover would stand firmly against fascism. I think many Hanoverians would not feel too positive about unification when regarding the economy. The Hanoverian economy would not have been immense potential of a unified Germany, but it would go pretty well, partly because of the extensive British trading network. However, I also think that many Hanoverians still yearn for a united German state, like the ancestors from 1848 did, and with Germany now following the democratic and free principles they accepted long ago, this could become true. Now, even with a stronger democracy, I think the Nazis couldn't be stopped. Things could be made more interesting if the Bavarians wanted to become or stay independent, like Hannover was for the last century. With Bavaria as a socialist republic, the world would be more interesting and chaotic again. But this is where I'm ending my scenario. The rest is up to you. What do you think would happen next? Would Bavaria become communist? Would Hitler rise to power in Germany? What would the democratic Hanoverians think of this? And would Britain intervene or be even friendlier towards the German government? Write your ideas down in the comments. Subscribe to Mr. Z's channel and also mine for more alternate history and actual history as well. Leave a like to support the channel and I will see you next time.